<laughs> Hello, Minister. Yes, I'm back. Sorry. You're back, yeah? Yeah. Okay. We have a we have a delay, but we're just going to try and cope with that for the sec for a second. Let me just introduce um, the minister a little bit to you, both online and here in the audience. Um, minister Kureng is um, the Minister of Environment, Natural Resources, Conservation and Tourism for Botswana, and she's recently been acknowledged as one of African African Tourism Board's key leaders for her close work with rural communities to identify, plan, and manage ecotourism projects. So she knows uh, very much about what it means to be involved in sustainability when it comes to tourism. Uh, let's just get a quick, quick background on Botswana. Now, obviously, maybe you know that Botswana has in the past, and still, uh, in terms of income, relied on diamonds and mining as being a major source. But it now wants tourism to not only increase foreign exchange earnings and government revenues, but to also ensure the sustainable development of the country while promoting inclusive growth and generating jobs. And the country also encourages and prides itself, I think, on, uh, on consultations between the stakeholders for a countrywide development which is beneficial to all. So, Minister, can you please tell us first, what is the action plan for Botswana to develop its tourism industry in the coming years? The action plan is actually um, operationalizing the revised tourism policy that was developed and was passed by a parliament last year, which draw, drew some lessons from COVID-19 and ensured that we could build a resilient tourism sector, a sustainable one, one that citizen participation is prioritized, where marketing and promotion of destination Botswana is enhanced, where capacities is, uh, you know, are enhanced as well, and where competitiveness is, 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 is driven. Uh, it, one that embeds or you know, infuses sustainability and balances with other economic sectors, which are required now to actually mainstream tourism in whatever that we do. Operationalizing this policy through strategies focus on citizen participation as one of the main objectives where we open up you know, tourism opportunities for the citizens and facilitate support of government for citizens you know, to get skills through joint venture partnerships with investors that they can you know, be part of this sector. We all are also opening up uh, tourism value chains as part of the government's re reset agenda in which we unpack different business and job opportunities within tourism operations so that we no longer have hotels that you know procure you know you know from outside the country if i may say or procure within themselves without giving citizens opportunities to supply the services and products that are used within you know the industry to give an example when we drive you know you know incentives conferences and events we actually unlock for citizens to come and you know be service providers from transport to food to cultural activities that are part of the program and also you know decoration and venue setups and, and, and so forth. So we also diversifying through this policy and strategy, you know, tourism away from the mainstream wildlife based product and, and you know, encompassing new products because we realized that the tourists that emerges from COVID-19 once more experience, they want to actually heal from hard lockdown. So we want to provide for them. We've started already diversifying into cultural activities, you know, we're diversifying into food food, we are marketing our Botswana beef, which is the best beef in the world, <laughs> and cultural dances and, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, activities away from, you know, the main Tantalizing. Um, <laughs> she's gone again. We got the general idea. I'll, I'll just say something quickly, which is that I was in Botswana in 2016, um, and that was the year that they celebrated their 50th anniversary of independence. 
And I saw a country there that had gone from relative poverty, really, to um, relative prosperity. I mean, this is a country that has done, had made a remarkable journey in that time. Uh, and I was impressed even then with its wildlife preservation policies. Um, Botswana, in many ways, became has become, and we took, discussed this yesterday, has become a haven for other countries' wildlife. They elephants, rhinos, all that, you know, the, all those animals, the big five, all the what you want to call them, they come in and Botswana makes sure that they are protected within the country. They've got very good policies like that. There was one point where there were only four rhinos left in the whole country, and now it's a, a thriving population. Um, and there's always the issue of poaching, which I know, again, uh, people in Botswana have had to deal with. But... Um, I was also interested, and I hope that um, the minister will come back. Uh, in I'm back. For example, they've got some of the oldest communities uh, on the planet uh, in Botswana. I'm talking about the San Bush people, which, uh, and we visited them, and and you know, th th we saw the rock art that, that goes back thousands of years, um, and it's interesting to see how much they will become. Which I was going to ask mm -hmm. the minister how much they will become stakeholders mm -hmm. in the future too. Um, agriculture huge part of Botswana um, environment and uh, what again will be interesting and I think that was being alluded to and we are having a panel by the way later on with just Botswana looking in terms of investment but uh, in terms of agriculture what about agritourism again I suspect that is something that is very much on the minds of the people and the government of Botswana um, but these are all factors that I think um, will help this country it's got competition. I'm answering my own questions here, but it's got <laughs> it's got competition because there are other countries in the area that provide amazing wildlife tourism. I'm thinking about Uganda, the Great Lakes. I'm thinking about Kenya, um, and so you know, it's it's why choose uh, Botswana rather than other countries? Again, we'll hopefully we'll if we don't find out now, we'll find out on the panel later. I think I've talked the talk when it comes to. Do you want to know anyone else about my trip to Botswana? Um, Okavango Delta, recommend that. Poling, where they have this kind of canoeing boots and uh, boats, and you go along there, and and that's something that does involve the local population and is doing very well. And of course, the Kalahari Desert, another aspect uh, of of Botswana. Uh, we've still lost her, so having blagged my way through this last few minutes, um, we'll pick up on on more about Botswana with the panel who are here in person. I think. In the meantime, Minister, thank you so much. I think we grabbed a little bit of what is happening and her thinking and the, and the government's thinking when it comes to sustainability uh, in Botswana and why it does differentiate itself from other countries and, and the fact that it is genuinely committed to involving local communities. We'll hear more soon. I think I've talked my way to the end of my limit. And uh, Paul, if the panel are, re are ready for the next session, that'd be fantastic. Thank you.